Venn diagram is number two. This is a con direct continuation on from the previous video. In the previous video, we looked at uh, an example here towards the end of the, that video. The number is chosen from a set of positive integers between one and eight inclusive, integers being whole numbers. If set A is the set of odd numbers and B is a set of prime numbers, we have a few things to do. All right, we saw in the previous video that the sample space is basically all the numbers that are relevant, and that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. A, the odd numbers from one to eight would be one, three, five, and seven. Set B, the prime numbers would be two, three, five, and seven. We drew the Venn diagram, and remember the Venn diagram the way we need you to get used to doing them if you're not used to it already is to have the rectangle and two sets mentioned inside we have the section of intersection the overlap and the three refers to how many how many of the values overlap there's three of them then we have one that's in A that is not in the intersection and then one element that's in B that's not in the intersection and then we have three that are in the sample space but they're not in set A, nor in B, nor in the intersection. Next thing we did was um, A intersection B. What's the, what's the intersection between the two? So what are those three numbers? All right, well, the intersection is anything that's in both sets. So it would be, looking at set A and B, it would be 3, 5, and 7. So A intersection B would be 3, 5, and 7 which we can see here. Okay, they're common to both. The union is all of this combined and we don't repeat things, so it's things that are in either A or B or in both of them, we only write the elements down once. So it would be one, two, three, five, and seven. That was all done in the previous video. The next new thing that we need to do is write the set A complement or not A. So A complement or not A. Now let's look at this. We can use the Venn diagram to help us think this through. Things that are in not A are outside of this circle here. And remember the circle goes through into the intersection. And basically we're looking for the, the this number here, whatever that is, and those three numbers there, and we combine them together because they're not in A. Okay, so things that are not in the influence of A are all these things okay all around there okay you can see that they're external to A so there are we're looking for four things what would they be alright well let's look at the things the three things that were not in um, either A or B they're the three that sit outside in the universal set uh, eight We've got six, we've got four. Now, what about the one that was sitting in B and only in B and it wasn't in the intersection and that was two. So we put all those together and we've got our elements in our set. So we have two, we have four, six, we have eight. The next one says B only. So things that are in B but there's no sharing with anything else. So they're not shared with A or anything else. So there's just one thing that's there, one element. And if we look at the two sets, we've got two is, is the answer because two is only in B and it's in nothing else. It's not in A. So our answer is a single element and that is two. Next we have to work out in D part one, the number of elements in A. Well, the number of elements in A will be 
1 and 3 is 4. Or another way of looking at it, 1, 2, 3, 4 elements in set A. So that's fairly straightforward once we know what the symbols mean. So let's write that down. The number of elements in A, that's what the little n means, is 4. The next step is the probability that an element is A. So these things can be used for probabilities. So remember the probability is the number of outcomes that, that we're interested in divided by the total number of outcomes. So the number of favourable outcomes over the total. So if we look at that, the probability of A, we said there is four outcomes from the previous one in A, four elements or four outcomes, and in the sample space there are eight altogether. So that's four eights or a half or if you like 0 0.5. We've got next the number of elements in A intersection B. So we go back to our set and we look at A intersection B. Well that's the zone in the middle and there are three. What are they? Those three. So we write our answer in and the number of elements in A intersection B is 3. What's the grand total? 8. 3 eighths, that can't be simplified any further as a fraction. Next we've got the probability that something is in the A intersection B, or something that, that what is the probability of something that is in the intersection of A and B? Once we know how many elements are in A intersection B, it's easy to work out the probability because it's the number of favourable outcomes over the total. Oops, I've made a mistake in the previous one. Can you see my error? I've made a mistake. I've gone and answered this question in the previous one. So the number of elements in A intersection B is just 3. I've gone a step too far. It only asks for the number of elements, not the probability. So, sorry, I jumped the gun a bit there. That's what we're doing in this step now is to find out the probability there's 3 out of a total of 8. That's 3 eighths, which can't be simplified. Alright, so that's as far as we're going in this video. There'll be a third and final one, which will look at two-way tables and probabilities and how they link to Venn diagrams.